Back in the day, those trucks had a mechanical door handle, rod mechanisms that actually would unlatch the door. Newer, really high-end vehicles use a lot of switches and electronics. Like on the new Escalade, it actually can get you like a soft closed latch. We took the original handle, we 3D scanned it, reverse engineered it. We are going to go through and modernize the original handle to incorporate a micro switch, can make it look nicer. Hey guys, Justin here from Zealous Manufacturing. On today's American Made, I'm gonna go through a part that I helped design and some of the machining on one of the components of that. So this customer specializes in Chevy slash General Motors uh, square body trucks. So the square body truck, I always get this wrong, 73 to 1987, I believe. So they did a lot of different styles, little tweaks that are out there. But back in the day, those trucks had a mechanical door handle. So there were springs, there was uh, rod mechanisms that actually would unlatch the door. Um, newer, really high-end vehicles use a lot of switches and electronics. So like on the new Escalade, it actually can get you like a soft closed latch. So if you're not familiar with soft closed technology, basically you close the door, as it gets there, it kind of draws itself in. Really common in like nicer cabinets. Um, so the newer mechanisms are really great for that. So we are going to go through and modernize the original handle to incorporate a micro switch, kind of give it a little tweak, make it look nicer. Um, and then we will actually machine one of those. So uh, we took the original handle, we 3D scanned it, reverse engineered it, and then we created a model that we could actually tweak and add some of the components through. So uh, we'll show a video of the actual finished handle so you can get an idea of what the item looks like. Um, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the machining of the button portion of it. So there's a lot of 3D surfacing and just some general uh, strategies that I thought would be helpful for others. So here's the item that we are going to do. This is the modernized door handle. We've got micro switch, some holders, some uh, mechanisms inside. Um, we've added some features to make this a little easier to machine and make it a little bit more manufacturable. But the item we're gonna focus on in this video is the button. So here's the button. So as you can see from the button, uh, it's tapered in all, all directions. So this is going to be a part we're gonna have to 3D surface. So let's jump over to the cam side. Op one, you're gonna notice right away, this is how I approached it. I'm not gonna go over specific speeds and feeds for tools, but I'm going to give you just the kind of general strategy. If you have any questions about the speeds and feeds, drop a comment below and I'll be glad to try and help or give you some more insight of what I did. So uh, as you can see here, the stock is bigger. Um, my plan uh, originally was to do one in each, but because of some machine goofiness, I decided to run three. So here you can see Op one, we've got three. So first operation, or the first step in op one, we're gonna uh, face all this off. So we've got a nice flat surface. So this item here is a wear surface. So as this switch over time, or if we need to adjust it, we can simply pull this button out and skim this surface to get it to exactly where we want. So uh, then we're gonna go in and rough all that out. Then we go in and rough all the actual items. So then when we flip it, there's not really much to remove. Uh, we're gonna go in and finish this face. So that's nice and flat. As you can see, we have some holes there that get drilled and tapped. Then we go in and we finish this outside so we can hold onto it with soft jaws. Then we're gonna go in and finish this contour. It's not critical, or it's not a critical contour, but um, I just like to have a nice finish on it, and then it'll fit into another item, but there's quite a bit of tolerance there, so it doesn't need to be ultra precise, but we're just gonna run a little contour around there. Um, as you've seen in the other Practical Machinist video, uh, deburring in the machine is what we try to do. So uh, deburred all those features as well. Drill and tap these holes. These are a 440, so um, for you guys that run a lot of small parts or a lot of small taps, I applaud you. Um, not my favorite, but that's the only size we can work with in this compact area. And then if you have watched, uh, we'll put a link here. 
Sean from SB Solo, he does a whole video on tabbing. So if you don't have a bandsaw or you just want to break these out easily, here you can see how I did it. So I ran in with just a rougher, put this big slot in, and then I cut the way arrest. So I'm holding onto these with talon grip or talon grip style jaws. So I wanted to leave a minimum here. I think I'm holding on to about 90 thousandths of material. I set this at like 105 thousandths just so I don't kiss the jaws. Um, but then also to give me a little bit thinner there. Um, so and these actually broke out perfectly. So that is the whole op one cam. Now you're going to notice a little difference here when you see op two. So if you see my stock is a little goofy. I had some concerns about running these. So, so here is what we're going to finish with in op one. Um, so then I break them apart uh, and then I was going to flip it. So I had some concerns when I flipped it of uneven vice pressure on when having this middle piece in there, if there's a little bit of variance there. Um, so I was only going to run two. I was going to run two side by side and then I'll leave the third. I've ran, I ran three or four of these bars. Um, so I have plenty of parts to run. So the, the breakout of that middle one wasn't as critical to me. So here uh, in my cam, I'll hide that. Here you can see the two. So because I'm not carrying over the same exact stock, I uh, got a little bit of a warning, but not the end of the world. So here, op two. Um, you'll also notice there's like a random hole here, uh, off in center, or you don't see the hole. Um, so op two, I'm, I've got soft jaws that hold these, and I bored a hole here to set my X and Y, or you know, really my G54 here. It's a machine surface, so I know where that is. Picking up off of this surface, so remember, this is what we're gonna be coming in with. So I didn't really have anything that was really good to pick up off of, so I just tried it this way. This is one of the things I do when I have goofy items, um, and it seems to work. So here we go. Um, again, all, I know all of this stock below is actually gone, um, but we went in, we roughed out all of that. So we're removing the top hat. So you can picture here, here's that top hat. Then we go in, we remove the top hat on these, and then we uh, 3D surfaced or roughed, it's not really surfacing yet, we roughed all of this out. Um, one thing I noticed here was because I don't have any inside contours or anything really small, I wanted to use a bull nose to get some speed um, and get a little bit of rigidity. So when I did this, I just went in with a standard rougher, left decent sized step up. Then when I went in and smoothed it all or really surfaced it, I went in with a very small step over or step down, depending on how you look at it. I ran a 3D scallop here. Don't know if it's gonna pick that up there. Turn on our tool pads, there it does. You can see that scallop in there. So uh, I went in with a 316 bull nose, 15 thou corner radius. Um, and I went in with a very small step over. So my goal is to have this ready to polish off the machine. So I know this customer is going to polish and probably chrome plate this item, this whole assembly. So I wanted it as smooth as could be. So his polisher can literally just kind of do this easily. Um, when you get into some other features, especially when you get into internal features, it gets a little more complicated. You gotta go in with different tools, but. Uh, so I went in here. Uh, one thing that kept tripping me up was at this tangency point where this radius comes over and flattens out, goes back down to this taper. At that tangency point, I kept getting a little step. So couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. And then what I noticed was I actually had to change my my top height so i had it set to like model top so because it was hitting this point it wasn't actually going past that so it would kind of skip over you can imagine this tangency point here it would skip over that and then it would come and start working back here so i changed this to stock top to make sure it looked at everything um, that's one thing sometimes I get a lot of questions about if somebody's asking me when I'm doing surfacing. So in camp software I use, um, one thing I always make sure to note, 
uh, contact or contact boundary. That's something sometimes that selection will actually help. Um, so we surfaced it all. And then because I went in with that bull nose, you're going to notice right here at the bottom, there's a little bit of a mismatch there. So I intentionally left this so I could clean it up. So I just ran a straight uh, flat end mill. So I could clean that up because this is a surface that I needed to be f relatively flat to butt up on the handle. So um, we left that, cleaned that up. And then, as you heard the theme before, deeper in the machine. So ran a chamfer mill. Someone might say, what about this? Again, we know that is not actually there because we've removed all that. So um, one thing I, I always encourage is your stock looking as correct as it can be in this case, because I went from three parts to two, there's nothing I could do. I could switch the stock to each piece and then do it, but this was just easy. Um, this job was kind of a rushed through. Um, so that was what we did there. So that's op two. Um, and now we'll actually show you the finished button. So here you can see we've roughed out the wear pad and the item. Now we're going to go in and clean up a lot of the surfaces, do some contour work, and tab it. So the wear surface pad is finished contour wise. This face is uh, milled flat and then this outside uh, so that it'll fit in the mating item and then as well it'll fit in soft jaws obviously so we can flip it and debird in the machine no hand debirding here needed so in there you can see the tab just set I think like 80 thousands above the talon style jaws that I use so now I'll be able to break these out swap jaws put soft jaws in and Run up two. So a little proof, Sean, your method does work, but I broke these. Uh, couldn't do it on camera. I've got kind of a bum arm right now. So, um, yep, these broke through. So now we'll put soft jaws in and run them. So I'm rerunning uh, these parts. I've already ran them. So for this video, I wanted to rerun them, show you guys. Um, but Pat, uh, job shopper, did a whole little video thing on how to align soft jaws. So uh, I took that idea, I'm trying to do this one handed. So I have a parallel here. I can tighten this, fix jaws tight. I'll tighten this jaw and then it should line up perfectly. So I want to give a shout out. Uh, another reason you should follow the guys here on Practical Machinist. Some really good, helpful tips here as well. So here the parts are flipped. Uh, they're in the soft jaws. There's that artificial point you can see. So uh, when I milled the soft jaws, I just touched off here and then for Z and then not obviously here on the fixed jaw Z and then this is X and Y. Um, so now I can just rough everything out, smooth it and deburr it. So here we are op two all roughed out. You can see the steps there. Now we're gonna go in with that bull nose and uh, clean it up. So parts are finished. So all smoothed out, cut that little relief so it's all nice and flat. And we deburred, deburred that bottom as well. So there you can see it. All done. Uh, these can be polished basically right off the machine. So these will go into the handle assembly and it'll all be great. Now that we have the button finished, we can work on the micro switch holder. We can get these handles assembled and we can get them shipped out. Really like bringing this handle to life. It's really cool to see it start to finish. Um, one thing I would, I'm asking of all of you, of the viewers is I want to know how you would tackle this project. If you're a fellow machinist, I use that term loosely for myself, um, but I know there's a lot of great machinists out there that watch these videos. The only thing you guys really don't know is quantity. Um, I had to make 
three sets, so three left hands, three right hands, um, but the button was the same for all of them, just so you're all aware. Feel free to drop a comment below, ask any questions. Like I said, if you want more info on speeds and feeds or what I used, please drop that. I'll be sure to get that as fast as I can. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to Practical Machinist channel um, and turn on your notifications so when new videos drop, you're the first to know.